I've got a brochure here from the 50s uh, showing a center channel loudspeaker. Uh, when, when did you first uh, experiment with a center channel loudspeaker? About 1950s, not by, about 1950. But seriously, <clears throat> I undertook to demonstrate it in 1958. And that was locally here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell a little bit about that? I built, in 19, I think it was 50, 58, I built only corner speakers. And I was drawing dirty pictures on the backs of envelopes and uh, my sales rep in Philadelphia said, that's not a corner speaker. And I said, no, I told him why. He said, well, coming from you, that would be heresy. So we named the speaker the heresy. Uh, later we sold them to churches. So the Heresy is probably the first commercial center channel speaker? Uh, the first that I... Uh, the first that I introduced. After all, Bell Telephone Laboratories did this back in the 19, early thing, in the early 30s. But do you know of anybody else that did it commercially after them? Because Bell was not commercial. No, I... You were a lone wolf? <laughs> uh, my part-time dealer in Los Angeles you know, used some naughty adjectives to describe my trying to introduce a second speaker to for stereo. And he says, that did that gum it all it's hard enough to sell one of these things now you want me to sell two well as a matter of fact we need to sell three and i built a, a, a non-corner speaker that i could carry around in the back seat of the airplane uh, i could visit a dealer who didn't have but one clip speaker in the store and i introduced my little miniature corner speaker as a second speaker for stereo. And that later on become the th became the third speaker when we, uh, when we introduced as a bridged center speaker. What, what's the advantage of a center speaker? For home use, it's probably not very great. The advantage of a second speaker for stereo is, uh, well, not exactly startling, but at least it's very realistic. Now, you add a center speaker, a lot of people can't even hear it. If the uh, listener subtends an angle between the, the corner speakers of around 90 degrees, there's apt to be a hole in the middle, and then uh, the uh, center, channel, center speaker will focus the uh, soloist. Uh, if the subtended angle was less than, uh, say, 30 or 40 degrees, uh, the output of the flanking speakers will fill in the, fill in the center and combine to form a uh, virtual center channel. So the ch center channel just augments the virtual effect that, that tends to occur. Uh, now, of course, you, uh, the uh, oh, home theater folks, the home, home theater uh, <laughs> folks want to sell you uh, <laughs> five or six speakers, uh, uh, three in the front and uh, four or five scattered around the rest of the room. Well, I heard a theater gem demonstration. Of, well, I went to the movies in Honolulu, Hawaiian Islands. I, I have a photographic, photographic memory, but it never developed. I can't remember the name of the show. Um, well, I had a whole, they had the three big theater speakers up front. 
and about a dozen heresies around the uh, uh, auditorium. Well, the sound was a uh, sound, sound from came, uh, sound came from all over. If the sound was a, uh, this is part of the stage, why that's where that, that's where you hear it in the uh, in the auditorium. Well, that's gilding the lily, but uh, if you want to go to thousands thousands of dollars of surround speakers, uh, well, it's the way to go. Uh, personally, I think it's. Uh, I personally think that's gilding a lily. Uh, uh, I don't spend that much time in the theater. Mm -hmm.